He's known for his campaigns for brands like Bacardi, Red Bull and Nike. But now he's on a new adventure, rolling out the world's first avocado franchise called The Avocado Show. And he's here to tell you how to go viral like a celebrity sex tape. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to Ron Simpson. Uh, so this is really weird. I have no idea if you guys hear me or not. So show of hands, yeah, it works. Cool, awesome. Uh, my name is Ron Simpson. I'm very cold, so I'll be walking up and down the stage all the time, just so you guys know. Feel free to move. Um, we're here to talk about avocados. That's kind of weird. Um, so we're not here to talk about avocados. We're here to talk about a way of thinking and how we changed something that belongs to everyone into a business. Um, so here we go. Has anyone ever heard about the avocado show? Please show hands. That's not bad. Uh, I'll take that, thank you very much. The Avocado Show, for anyone who doesn't know, is a restaurant that started here in Amsterdam. Uh, now we have four of them. It basically sells everything based on avocados. Now, doing that is quite weird because we're not from a hospitality background. We used to do brands and nightlife and festivals. And one day we just figured, hey, let's start a restaurant where we could eat ourselves. Could be, you know, kind of cool little hobby kind of thing. And it just took off and went berserk. So I want to uh, tell you this great story. And if there's anything you want to know, you can interrupt me in between. I don't mind. So me and Jules, we have this agency background. Mostly like all of you guys, we did campaigns and cool brands and all this other stuff. Basically played with someone else's money, which is great. Um, and one day we came together and we were like, hey, let's start a business in daytime. Let's see what we can do. Where would you start? Like, I'm not from hospitality, so I was like, if I was gonna open a restaurant, where do I begin, right? So we said, everything that was opened in a mono restaurant form, that worked for the past five years. If you want a hamburger, you go to that gourmet hamburger place. If you want chicken, you go to Fun of Spit. If you want salad, you go to Sla or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we knew we wanted to do something like that, but then we had this crazy you know, marketing ego, like people know that we are supposed to be creative, so I can't open the next pizza place. I have to do something original. This is a grave we dug for ourselves, right? Um, so we're thinking of what, can, what on earth hasn't been done yet. And we found out people like food, but they want their food to be prettier than before, healthier than before. Some of them are vegan or flexitarian, but they want to eat with someone that still eats meat. And it's all, you know, this, this landscape just, just went on and on and on. And we found out if you want to do a mono restaurant and you want to comply to all these trends, find a product that fits. And we chose the avocado. Now, why? Um, first of all, it's the most nutritious fruit in the world. It's very sexy. It has good fats, just like me. It's very versatile, so you can, um, you can sort of do anything with it. Hot, cold, sweet, savory, whatever you want. And most importantly, I don't have to explain to you, if you want to open a restaurant, it better taste good, right? So that's where we started. It even jumped, which was kind of cool. Now, everyone here knows how budgets and time work. You don't get any of any, right? It's just like, we had even less. We didn't have money for any research. We didn't know how to do it exactly. Um, and honestly, if we had money for research, I don't think we would have done it. Now, the reason for that is simple, and some of you are holding it in your hand right now. It's a phone, right? So if you have a phone, you could do research in like five minutes. So we did that. We grabbed a phone and figured, let's just ask people, and by people, I mean my favorite people, women, 1835, hardcore target group. Let's just ask them what would happen. Hey, what would you think if I would open an avocado restaurant? Oh Oh, that's fucking amazing. That was the day I actually learned that every single woman on earth speaks fluent emoji if you ask the right question. Now, that was check number one. Target group and our friends were like, yeah, yeah, you should do it. We're like, okay, cool. The second thing was, this is back in 2016. So I grab my phone, I go to Instagram, and I do something which is, anyone ever heard of white privilege? Yeah, let's not touch that subject. Um, 
But calling an avocado an avocado is white privilege. It's not even called that. It's called that here in Europe. It's called aguacat on the other half of the world, palta in the other half of South America. It has all these names. But we did hashtag avocado, and it hit 8 million hits. 8 million hits on your nickname. That's kind of weird, right? So if we put all the names of avocado together, it had the same amount of hits as coffee. Anyone think there's a market for that? So we were like, oh, this is kind of cool. You know what really sucks? You can't walk into a bank and say, hey, 8 million hashtags, motherfucker, fund me. <laughs> what does work is just Googling how big this market actually is. Now, $12 billion is kind of cool, but that was 2012, and it's going to grow to $23 billion by 2021. And that's way too close for me. Now, these type of numbers kind of work. So we walked into a bank and I said, hey, I have something original. You know, there's this huge market for it. It has hashtags out the ass. Please give me money. And they said, no. Okay. Um, so we had to do this ourselves, which I like. So we, we went into this grind mode for five days, which was really weird. We decided this is going to be it, right? Oh, the avocado, that's what we're doing. Now, small problem. It's just me and Julian. Two friends who figured out we want a little restaurant. You know what you really need to open a restaurant? You need a chef. It sort of sucks that we can't cook. So I called a friend of mine. His name is Jamie Van Haye. He's the guy in the middle. Now, the reason that I know him is Instagram, which is weird, because he cooks food based on the colorway of sneakers. How can you not be friends with this guy? So I call him, and I'm like, yo, I need some help. I need this Excel file sheet kind of thing that just convinces the bank to give me money. That's what I need. Send it to me. And he's like, I could send it to you, but you wouldn't know a thing. You wouldn't know how it works. I'll just, you know what? I'll just come over and I'll do it for you. I said, great. He came in. He said, what is your plan, actually? I said, you know, we're going to open an avocado restaurant. And he said, I'm in. This is weird. I'm Jewish. So I was like, who asked you? And then I was like, oh, shit, no. I asked you. Yeah, no, please come. Join us. And he helped us create this amazing food idea. And now it was the three of us. 24 hours have passed. That is it. We decided to do it. Came up with this weird idea. Didn't even have the name yet. Ran into this guy. Tried to figure out how much money we would need for this, right? So here's the biggest thing. As I said, we have a marketing background. We have a brand background. We have a PR background. Which means we have every ego in the world stacked on top of each other, right? We suck. I know. But that's okay. So I was literally, until that day, convinced I was God's gift to marketing. When I woke up, fuck me. Marketing was only allowed to get out of bed when I woke up, right? <laughs> I was so wrong. It's ridiculous, but in a good way. So I went back, we found a name, and I was like, okay, I know exactly what to do. We're going to write this amazing press release with every buzzword from 2016. So, of course, it's going to be avocado and fuck it, blockchain. Boom. No one knows why. Just put it in there. And it's disruptive. So everything was in there. We made amazing pictures. Everything was right. Every little fiber in my body said, this is, you know, what you're supposed to do. You know what you're not supposed to do? You're not supposed to forget calling your mother. This is not even a joke. This whole thing happened in five days, and I didn't speak to her. So I was planning to bomb the world with this thing, and I didn't speak to these guys, which made a problem, right? That's my mom, that's my dad. They got married after two days. Read the book later. Now, I was thinking, is it humanly possible? Can you put out a press release without calling your mother? Repeat after me. I will never <laughs> send a press release without speaking to my mom if it's about stuff that changes your life. So, instead of everything being perfect, we went back and we made this picture, which really sucks. It was made by the guy that was standing on that ladder. Fuck it. We said, we're going to put this on Facebook and then tag my mom and then be done with it, right? Because if your friends and family are not the first people to find out what your plan is, you suck. You need them. You need their support. They have the privilege of knowing whatever stupid plan you're going to do next. So this is what happened. We had a few likes. It was kind of cool. You know, it's like 
when it's your birthday or you just had a baby and you're gonna put it on Facebook, you know you're gonna get likes, right? Don't lie to me. So I was like, oh yeah, I expected, you know, a little splash. This is cool. So I put it on Facebook and it just went. And by saying it went, this is the last moment my life was normal in any way, shape or form because we went viral like a celebrity sex tape. And this is not just a good marketing line, it's true. I have more views than Paris Hilton in the dark and no one can take that away from me. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean 212 million views on a little restaurant with 45 seats in Amsterdam. I mean waking up the next day with 100,000 followers on Instagram having no content, trying to speak five languages and no one knows what the hell this is all about. We were making headlines all over the world. I was in game shows in Japan, on the radio in Africa, trying to you know, do a Brooklyn accent in New York. It didn't make sense, but it was fun. I'll give them that. Now, normally when you go viral, it's about 48 hours, right? News comes into the world, you guys all like it, love it, read it, share it, whatever. Something cooler comes in and it dies. That's just how we work. How is it possible that we did this for two and a half months straight? It doesn't make sense. Who? Let me, I mean, for real. Show hands if you are willing to Talk about avocados for two and a half months. My hand isn't even up, right? So we were wondering like, what the hell is going on? This is kind of cool. By now it went to 132K, it went to 65K, it was just booming. And we didn't really get it. And we found out what it was. It's called the power of imperfection. If you want someone to spend more time on your concept, don't give all your information away. It's like dating. Imagine dating and then sitting at a table and you're like, first date, you know, it's kind of cool, nice restaurant. Hey, how are you? And the guy goes, well, I was born 35 years ago here and there and then I did this and I went to this school, got kicked out there. My mom's this, I used to have a cat, I used to have another cat, but who cares and blah, 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 just tells you everything. You don't want to know anything about this guy. You're faking a heart attack in 20 minutes and you're out. This is exactly what would have happened if we would have sent the entire package which was perfect in the press release. Because every single person would have written exactly the same piece with exactly the same pictures and 48 hours after that, everyone would have faked a heart attack. So there's no point in doing that. But by the fact that we just said, hey, I believe there's a market which is doing billions a year and there's no store for it. So you know what? We opened the first avocado restaurant in the world. Bye. And everyone was like, what? What do you mean? How? What? When? Why? How is this happening? Why has this not been done before? Who are you guys anyway? What are you serving? Blah, 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 blah. All these questions, they had to come in because we didn't tell them up front. Now, the cool thing about this is we made a network with everyone in the world that writes about food in two weeks. And they asked us all these questions and we could lie everything we wanted to because we didn't know the truth. When are you guys opening? We told some people March, April, May, I don't know, whenever. Um, and every picture we made was exclusive just for them. We just made 180 pictures every day. Fuck it, click, 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 click. This one's just for you, enjoy. So every single journalist in the world did something really cool they did their jobs. They actually asked questions and put together something instead of copy pasting it. That's why it went on for two and a half months, which was kind of cool, until one day I'm walking down the street and my phone rings. Now, if your phone rings and you see a number from Dublin, either your sister lives there or Google is calling, right? It's one of the two. Now, the tricky, weird thing about Google is they have people who speak every language in the world. They actually have spies here in a pink shirt, I see you. Yes, you, Google person, who I love, by the way. Um, so I'm walking down the street, my phone rings, it's from Dublin, I pick up the phone, and the guy speaks Dutch. Hey, hello, who got it? I'm like, what the hell is going on? He's like, hey, this is Alex. I'm like, hey, Alex, what's up? He's like, hey, uh, are you guys from the avocadoshow.com? I said, yes. 
He says, oh, that's awesome. I would like to congratulate you. I said, well, thank you very much, Alex. What's going on? He said, you guys had 1.1 million hits yesterday. I said, wow, that's awesome. He says, yeah, next time, publish your website. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, how about you guys put your actual website on my, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Go back, we didn't publish it. Shit happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that's a wise lesson. These guys, you know, they know everything, which is kind of cool, but it felt a little bit like this, and it got us to a very interesting place. Who here is old enough to understand what Telcel was or is, right? Yeah. Now, if you grew up here, I don't know about other countries, but here the fake name was Mike. Well, Mike, we're gonna sell you this salad chopper today or whatever. Now, the coolest thing ever to me was the first time I was watching TV and someone said, you want this? You want some of this? You call 0800 Hamburger. I was like, this guy's phone number is Hamburger? What the hell? I want that when I grow up. Well, I grew up and I tried to do it in Holland. You know how hard it is to buy this phone number? I had to buy 1,200 phone numbers because no one in Holland knows how to single sell you one number. You have to buy the whole pack. And then I was pissed because I'm like, why do I have to buy 1,200 of it? And then I realized something. Not all of us can read and write properly, right? Some people, you know, have a little bit more trouble with that, which is great. Because if you're dyslectic, you could call 088 Avocat D and still get me on the phone. We have all of them. <laughs> now, the weirdest shit happened, right? So as I told you, we went live, boom, went viral. Next day, we woke up with a fan base. How does that work? It works kind of troublesome. You don't know how to talk to them. We didn't have any documents stating about our tone of voice or any other thing that we were doing. So I had to, I'm a copywriter myself. I love it, but I didn't have any time. So I had to brief a copywriter. Who wants to see those three slides? Now, this is, I don't even want to discuss this. He is the best storyteller in the world. And then there's David Attenberg. Now imagine Morgan Freeman telling your brand story, your life story, your love story, whatever it is that you want, right? You want this, everyone wants this. So that's a good place to start when you tell a copywriter to tell a story, you're like, hey, I want you to write everything with him in mind. Now, the other greatest thing on earth is this. We all have a best friend, and the cool thing about them is you can just leave words out of a sentence and it still works. My best friend um, is a girl who's dating a guy who's so boring, I don't even know his name, she calls him Vanilla. So she can walk into a boardroom where I'm sitting with the CEO of something something and just tell me, uh, Ron, by the way, um, Vanilla was uh, here last night and it didn't really go as pleased. All right, thank you. And I know she had bad sex. That's the power of language and best friends. This is kind of a cool thing. So I figured if you can tell a story like Morgan Freeman but speak the same language as a best friend, that's enough to work with. So the final slide, and I'm not kidding, this is literally how we briefed them, was this. <laughs> Good luck, bon voyage, I hope it all goes well. Um, and it went on and on and on. And we got all these questions and people asked me, why are you called The Avocado Show? I was like, that's a very, very good question. Why are you not called The Avocado Shack, place, bar, restaurant, whatever? Well, first of all, Every URL was taken, and second of all, it's boring. If you call something a show, it goes two ways. Everyone at my office knows if they make something and they want to present it to me, whether it's a good idea or a dish or something, it needs to be show worthy. If it's not, they'll already go back to their desks themselves, which is great. The other thing is when people and customers actually come to eat at our place, they expect shit. They're like, hey, you're called a show, okay? You better put this on the table, this show. Cool, so we did that and we called it Pretty Healthy Food. This is where the marketing kicks in, right? So, as I said before, if you still have to explain that your food is tasty, you're in the wrong business. So we decided people want prettier food and they want healthier food. So if you call it Pretty Healthy Food, 
that sort of works, right? Now imagine this. Anyone here speak actually good English? Like my dad's British and I still suck at it, but there's some people here that know this, right? Now if you put that comma there, that's a problem because right now it says every single piece of food needs to be pretty and healthy. Now, I would love to, but we also serve pancakes, right? So how do you clear that up? How do you make this work on pancakes? Well, now it's pretty healthy food. Think about it. You still get all the synapses from the brain when you read this, but we're allowed to do it even when grammar Nazis come by to eat, which is great. Now, the cool thing about our food is this. When we think about creating it, we just ask one question. I don't like to market food, I like to market ideas. So, anyone here like pizza? Burgers, sushi, whatever, egg rolls, I don't care, anything you know, any dish you already know, just ask yourself the question, can we avocado it? Mostly it's yes, sometimes it's no. Burgers, yes. Sushi, yes. Poke bowls, yes. Pancakes, yes. Ramen soup, fuck no. Stay away. Just no. Which is a good thing and that's how we create our food. Now, the only thing we do is piggyback of something you already love and then just add avocado. So this is our poke bowl. And the next one, I'll just let you guess what it is. See if the marketing of the thing actually worked, okay? Anyone recognize this idea? The fact that I don't have to explain you guys what this is, is the power of our communication. You recognize it, and then we just say, but then with avocado. And that sort of works. And it works on gardens and pancakes for people who, you know, don't love animals, they love pets. There's also a version for people that love animals. There's eggs. There's the three euro side salad that we made look like it's allowed to be in a magazine. Doesn't make sense, but it was fun. There's pink pizza, there's all this kind of stuff, right? And when we were making this, it didn't just go by itself. I didn't just wake up and figure out how to photograph food. No, we fucked everything up just like everyone else. So I'm gonna show you some bloopers of us. They're not even that bad, I mean, honestly. This was when we thought maybe we should Showcase more nature. Nature part two. Maybe we should throw in unicorn cutlery. And apparently you eat with a cloth. No, we should go super, you know, strict and almost laboratory metal. That ain't doing anything for you. Let's remove everything. You know what? Girls love pink. More pink and pink and pink. That doesn't work either. If that doesn't work, when all else fails, try two plates. No one knows why. You know what? Let's do more wood. And all of this stuff, it's okay. But if you're a brand, you're not looking for okay. If you're my neighbor doing a little blog, you're looking for okay, which is fine. So this could have been my neighbor's blog, and it could have been any of our blogs. Now, how do I change this into a brand like that? We used our social media database, all the followers we had, to figure out what actually works. What do these guys like more? What do they share more? How do they engage more? If we use dark backgrounds, all the colors pop. If we take away all the unnecessary bullshit around the food, you're focused on the shape and actual brilliance of the thing. If we use green, which, you know, spoiler alert, if you serve avocados, you will you know, run into. The trick is use a blue or a purple to use contrast in each and every picture that is liked more than any other picture on our Instagram. Now, why is that? Purple and green are opposites in the spectrum of color. Apparently, all we had to do is just ask a photographer or artist how this works and they unlock every single piece of content. Now, the way we shot this is real. There is no hairspray or fake food or whatever. This is actually food from our restaurant. And the lights that we used to shoot this, we installed in every restaurant. The actual base that you see here, 
We installed as tabletops at the restaurant. Why? So that everyone that comes and eats with us can actually make the same picture without trying. And that's how we use this you know, huge wave of people coming through our restaurants to actually spread our message, which is kind of cool. Now, we all know avocados are yummy, but they also kind of suck if you read the media. It's about water, it's about cartels in Mexico, it's about a whole ton of hard questions, but we're out of time. No, I'm kidding. Um, we heard the same things. It's kind of weird. You want to do something cool, a week later you're viral all over the world, and a week later you're at home feeling like shit because people are telling you things you have no knowledge about. I'm like, I don't know what's going on in Mexico. I don't know what's going on with water or the trees. We could have done two things. This is what we chose to do. We went to our supplier and we said, I only want to work um, if the avocados are sustainable and socially responsible. That's it. Where do I buy these? And we found Nature's Pride. Now, the cool thing about this is we also found the lady sitting next to me who's called Sean Harris. We call her the Bill Gates of avocados. And she actually helped us build this company by founding it, but also by opening the doors that we really wanted to do. Remember that we started late today because there was a font problem? It was mine. Sorry, this sucks, but the future is green. <laughs> now imagine a cooler font, okay? Um, we made a documentary and I went across our entire supply chain, South Africa, Chile, Peru, Mexico, to try and figure out absolutely everything there is to know about how they treat people. What is it about water? What is it about trees? Can avocados be grown sustainably? Well, the answer is yes. We made quite a cool little video. I have no idea if you're hearing music right now, so I'm gonna pretend to dance. Does that work? Ending. Go. All right, so you can watch this. It's super free. It's 15 minutes and it answers every hard question simply because we didn't want to say the answer that someone told us. We just wanted to know by ourselves. We wanted to go out and see it. The most important thing um, about this, no idea what that slide is doing there, is that if avocado is one of the most nutritious fruits in the world, we should do everything we can to actually put it in people's diets. Now, if you will see, for instance, the new UNICEF campaign, you will see exactly this. Instead of white rice, they want to start giving malnurtured kids avocados because it's much better for you. Um, the only thing we need to figure out is how are we going to do the production process the way it's supposed to be done. Good news, all the big boys are, are already doing it right. All the smaller farmers have trouble paying for all the techniques. So one of our goals is when we grow up later, we want to fund every single person that makes avocados to be able to do it right. That's one of our business goals at this point. After that, we opened our first little restaurant. The bank still wouldn't pay, so it looks like we paid for it ourselves. We did. So everything there is just you know cheap, cool, and fluffy. Um, the weird thing was the night before we opened, people camped out like we were doing Kanye West sneakers or shit. It was just weird, but that was fun. Made a lot of headlines with that. 22,000 people applied for the first breakfast, which was kind of fun too. Um, this is us having fun. This is a line that got created that day that just stayed there for the next two and a half years. Um, basically because the place is too small, it's not, nothing else. Uh, we got all of these people from all over the world and when I say all over the world, I mean parts of the world with bad fonts, um, asking us, can we actually franchise this place? We had 75 franchise requests before we opened. That doesn't even make sense. We're like, what do you want? I want, I want it. What do you want? We don't have food. We don't have chairs. What do you want? So we're trying, we tried to figure that out. That took us a year. Um, we called it franchising because we asked the people around us and online where the most chatter is and put that together where the most avocados are sold and that's our next location. So basically we're gonna start in Europe and then roll out across the world. We have four now, we signed 11, so we're going to 15 in the next year, which is gonna be amazing. 
This is how a franchise manual looks. You'd never ever want to write one. Um, and the most important thing is we opened our first franchise, which was really cool and sort of a school as well. It sucks, every single mistake that you could ever make, we made it. I'll tell you all about it at a different time. Um, but if you're ever in Brussels, please hop in and have some fun. The most important thing about our business is this. We believe you can speak anything into existence. When we started, it was just a restaurant. I remember literally saying for the first time, maybe we're going abroad with this. Maybe it's gonna be a franchise. Maybe we can turn this into a brand. And every time I said that, it sounded crazy. Two and a half years later, we're actually doing it and people around us helped us so much, but they can only do that when you actually tell them what to do. Um, we made a cool cookbook, which was one of the things we always wanted to do. We made a full merchandise line for everyone that just loves avocados, which is kind of funny to do. We went on market with our very first food product to beat the bitter ball in Holland, a vegan avocado fry, which is kind of cool, as we are on our way to become a sustainable love brand. Now, my name is Ron Simpson, you guys are awesome, and this was The Avocado Show. Thank you very much. Not bad. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions. Are you sticking around for a while? I am definitely sticking All around. All right, yeah. so Ron's sticking around. So if you've got any questions, he's going to be here for a while, so go and ask him himself. So, everyone, show your appreciation for Ron Simpson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Ron. Have fun.